Reflections turn to the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 6, verses 27 to 36, where Jesus challenges us to do good to those who hate you. Before we delve into this scripture, let's set the stage. Background. In Luke's Gospel, this passage is part of what is often referred to as the Sermon on the Plain, where Jesus imparts profound teachings to his disciples. It's a moment where Jesus, in his characteristic way, turns conventional wisdom on its head and invites his followers to embrace a radical form of love and compassion. Now, let's embark on our reflection with five key points on doing good to those who hate us from Luke chapter 6 verses 27 to 36. Point 1. Love beyond expectations. Jesus begins by challenging our notions of love. It's easy to love those who love us, but Jesus calls us to a love that goes beyond expectations. We are to extend kindness and goodness even to those who may harbor animosity towards us. Comparative Reference Matthew chapter 5 verse 46 For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Point 2. Bless those who curse you. Jesus takes it a step further by encouraging us to bless those who curse us. It's a radical notion, challenging the natural inclination to retaliate or hold grudges. Blessing those who curse us is a tangible expression of the transformative power of love. Comparative reference. Romans chapter 12 verse 14. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Point 3. Turn the other cheek. The famous instruction to turn the other cheek is not a call to passivity but a challenge to break the cycle of violence and hatred. It's an invitation to respond to hostility with nonviolent resistance and a desire for reconciliation. Comparative reference. Matthew chapter 5 verse 39, But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. Point 4. Be merciful as your father is merciful. Central to this teaching is the call to be merciful. In imitating God's mercy, we become instruments of his grace. Our mercy is not limited to those who deserve it but extends even to those who may seem unworthy. Comparative reference. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48. You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Point 5. Conquer evil with good. Linking with today's other reading from Romans chapter 12 verses 9 to 21, the idea of conquering evil with good is reiterated. Our response to hatred and animosity should be rooted in the transformative power of goodness. It's a proactive approach to overcoming darkness with the light of Christ's love. Quotes from Saints, Catechism, Teachings of Pope Francis, Street. Francis of Assisi beautifully captures the essence of this teaching, saying, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. The Catechism of the Catholic Church echoes Jesus' call to love our enemies, stating, This commandment of Jesus is the supreme law of perfection. Pope Francis, in his teachings, emphasizes the importance of mercy and reconciliation in a world often marked by division. Connecting to current affairs, in the midst of the complexities of our world, where conflicts and divisions often dominate headlines, the call to love our enemies and do good to those who hate us is strikingly relevant. In a society where revenge and retribution are often seen as justified responses, the gospel challenges us to embody a countercultural love that seeks reconciliation. As we reflect on this teaching, let us consider how we, as a faith community, can be agents of healing and reconciliation in our families, workplaces, and communities. In a world that often thirsts for justice through retaliation, may our response be a testament to the transformative power of Christ's love. In conclusion, may the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 6 verses 27 to 36 inspire us to live out the radical love he calls us to, especially in this season of the Annunciation. As we embrace the challenge to do good to those who hate us, may our actions be a reflection of the boundless love of our Savior. Amen.